Okay. All right. So for today, we'll discuss. So we've discussed some techniques, okay, on uh, on how to um, solve your problems, okay, or basically how to craft algorithms. So we did recursion, okay. We also discussed uh, how to analyze algorithms, okay, using the big O notation. Uh, we looked into basic algorithms of search and sorting, okay. So those two are pretty much very generic problems. Uh, but we discuss it on a very basic level, okay? Uh, now, we will look into the other aspect of the class, which is on the data structures, okay? So, uh, during our first lecture, okay, uh, we have, we, I provided the definition of a data structure, which is a way to store and organize data in order to facilitate access and modification, okay? So, not all problems are solvable by one type of data structure, okay? Um, I mean, Maybe you can do a workaround, but you'll probably end up with the same problem as I did, as I had, um, you know, running a code uh, for 20 hours, but only accomplishing 17%, okay? Um, actually, in, on that exercise, I changed the data structure, and um, that's why I, short, I shortened the runtime from 20 hours to one hour, okay? So I changed, um, actually, the data structure to to accomplish the, what I need to do, okay? So now before we go into detail on what data structures um, we're discussing, let's go back to the basics, okay? So um, if you are not familiar with sets, okay? It's a fundamental um, concept, both to computer science and mathematics, okay? So when we talk about mathematics side, they are usually universal and unchanging, okay? The set of animals, okay? is technically all animals in the universe. The set of numbers, okay, would be, would be any number that is known to humankind. Set of real numbers is different from set of unreal numbers or imaginary numbers, okay? So it's a very fundamental concept that should not change as frequent as possible, okay? But, but in computer science, you are looking into how to change these we're not really breaking the universal laws, no? uh, but really how can we manipulate these sets okay, as containers, as structure, okay, uh, to solve specific problems. Okay? So meaning our elements, are, uh, the, our elements um, in the set that, we're, uh, that we are dealing with are changing across time. Okay? So you could think of a list of number of like the characters A, B, and C. Later on, you will add a D. Later on, you will drop C. You will add another E, and so on. So you, that's how um, dynamic step would be, okay? So since we are on a CS class, we are looking on a dynamic step, okay? So here, each element is represented by an object, okay? Whose attributes can be examined and manipulated if we have a pointer to the object, okay? So you could imagine somebody, let's say ako, me as a professor, I could point to any one of you and say, you are the beetle, okay? I am pointing to Angelo, you are the beetle. Maybe next week I'm pointing to Piana, you are now the beetle for this week, and so on. Okay, so uh, our class, our set of uh, MC circuit class is changing, okay? By simply changing uh, where I'm pointing at, basically, okay? Uh, but that's just more of a very layman example, okay? What attributes are we talking about? First is we have a key, okay? How um, that uniquely identifies each element or object in the set. We have the data, okay? Which is the attributes, okay? Um, of that element or the element itself, what it contains. And we also have the pointer, uh, which is me in that example, okay? Who am I pointing at, basically? Some keys are presumed to be drawn from a totally ordered set, okay? So you might have encountered um, arrays before, okay? So array zero, x, x bracket zero, x bracket one, two, three. So those keys are actually coming from an ordered set, which is zero, one, two, three, four, and so on, okay? So yeah, some keys are presumed to be drawn from a totally ordered set. There are cases that the keys are not ordered by itself, 
Okay, so very um, uh, other examples, okay, generic examples. <clears throat> All right, so what can we do with dynamic sets? Okay, so we, uh, we can divide the activities into two. Okay, so we have queries which return information about the set. Okay, we can also modify uh, the set by using operations. So we use modifying operations to actually change the set itself. Okay, so what are these? Uh, first, okay, you've encountered this previously, search problem, where we return the value K from a set S, okay? Uh, major generic, major abstracted level, no, I'm not talking about arrays, that's just set, okay? So um, you can also insert um, an element X into set S. Okay. We can delete or remove element X from set S. Okay. We can also return the minimum. Okay. So if you have a totally ordered set, you have a sorted array, okay, and return the smallest key or the A of zero, you get the minimum of the entire set. Or the other way around, if you have a, a sorted set and get the largest key or largest index, okay, A of N, then you get the maximum of that set, okay? Coming from uh, this assumption that we have a um, totally ordered set, okay? So of course, if it's a totally ordered set, it's not, it, it, would, it would be difficult to get the minimum and maximum, no? or at least it's, it, it's not as straightforward as this one, okay? Um, we, there are also other um, operations such as successor, okay? What is the large next index? after x okay or null if x is already the maximum because they're out of bounds no? uh, or the predecessor okay what is um the key to the left of x or smaller key before x from a totally ordered set s or null if x is already the minimum so that's already negative one okay so in the next modules okay we will talk about how can we represent finite dynamic sets and how can we manipulate them Okay, and that is using um, elementary data structures, which is the topic for today. And as I've mentioned earlier, not all data structures would be appropriate for specific problems. So each data structure addresses, uh, comes with a purpose, okay? Or each data structure addresses, comes with a purpose, okay? It addresses a particular usage context. So we will be looking into the context on how these um, data structures are used. Okay, so that we can uh, implement specific uh, subset of operations, right? Now, before we, again, be that's more of the theoretical abstracted part. Now we will go to how memory is working in the computer itself, okay? So you can imagine the memory as a shell, okay? Now, if you have two items, you would need two shelves, to store your items, okay? So let's say you have an umbrella and a bunny, stuffed bunny, stuffed toy. I don't know if it's a real bunny or not. Hopefully it's not a real bunny. Uh, but you have two items, okay? And you need to store them. Then you would require two shelves, okay? So there, if you have three items, you need three shelves. If you have N items, you need N shelves, okay? So that's exactly how the memory works, okay? So you have, uh, similarly to how we represent arrays no, or any slot, okay, you have uh, quote unquote shelves here, and each of these shelves has a specific address. Okay, could um, anyone would like to guess what type of um, uh, number is this? You could type it on chat or could unmute yourselves. Anyone who would like to guess what num what type of number is this? Anyone? Is it binary? Is it decimal number? Is it um, text number or it's an oct octal number? Mm -hmm. 
hex number. Okay, correct. This is a hex number. As you can see, we have F, P. Okay, if you remember our um, uh, our hex symbols, okay, our representation, okay, it goes from zero to nine and A to, um, I think it was F or E. It was F, okay, until F. So um, yeah, so it's a hex number, okay. As you can see, if we if we remember how to convert the hex into binary, then we can you actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times four. Um, you have thirty-two bits. Okay, so you can see you can say that this memory is a thirty-two bit memory. Okay, so now you you probably um, have heard thirty-two bit and sixty-four bit. This is exactly what it's saying. Okay, so we have here thirty-two bit memory each. Uh, memory is uh, storing uh, is stored via an address. Okay, so this is how memory works within the computers. Okay, and now let's do it in an activity. Okay, so I mean uh, thought experiment. Okay, let's say your task is to store your to do activities in memory. Okay, so you have a brunch. Okay, activity. You have a bocce or a ball game. Apparently, I just searched it earlier. And uh, you have a T session, okay? So if you would store it in memory, okay, you would store it on its, again, like the umbrella and the stuffed, uh, stuffed toy, you would store it on different shelves, okay? On a br brunch on one shelf, bocce on second shelf, T on third shelf, and maybe you have an open slot at the end, okay? So this is an example of an array. And when we are using arrays, Okay, you know the address of each item. Okay, so you know that branch is located at zero index, bochi is located at one index, t is located at two in index two, and we have an open slot at index three. Okay, I'm just using index to simplify the the reference, but I'm what we are actually referring is the actual address in the memory. So it's not just index zero, but what exactly is the memory address behind that index zero, okay? So, simplify ko lang. So, if we are talking about address, okay, we are actually referring to the text number that you've seen earlier, okay? So, we know which address or which slot um, does branch occupy, does bocce occupy, does the occupy, okay? So, that means if you have a random, random index which points to an, a, a physical address, you can actually use arrays to read random elements. Okay, so if, let's say um, within, if, let's take a random number between zero and two, another two, then you can simply pull out what information is at, is at index two, okay, which is um, T. Okay, let's say randomly we pick zero, we know where index zero is, then we pull, we pull, we pull out branch instead. Now the problem with arrays, is that in the physical memory, you have a lot of things happening in your computer. Probably now you are doing something uh, aside from the Zoom class, maybe some of you are playing games or watching uh, shows while having my voice as the ambient noise, I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, so a lot of instructions are happening around your computers, okay? So it's not just these three activities that you are writing specific for this task, but there are also other tasks that are occupying other memory slots, okay? So if let's say we want to add uh, the fourth to do, to do activity, we cannot just add here because this slot is already occupied by another transaction, okay? So what your computer needs to do is to find another end slot shelves, okay? So let's say, we add the fourth element here, let's say study. Okay, we now have branch, play bocce, drink tea, and then study. You have to move the entire uh, array to, uh, to the next available four slot shelves or four slot memory slot. Okay, so it's not very efficient when it comes to writing elements in uh, when using array. Okay, it's because you need to. Uh, have that amount of 
slots available in your memory. Okay, so now, okay, we have a different uh, data structure, which is called the list. Okay, now in this picture, okay, you can see that each of the activities are placed basically anywhere in the in the memory, any available slot. You have the branch here, the botchy here, the T. And if we add one more, we can easily place it on any free memory slot available. Okay, so when we use lists, you can easily insert an item. Okay, just look for a free slot and then put it there. You're good to go. Okay. In the same way, it's also easy to delete an item. Okay, so you just simply have to look where the branch is, remove it, and it's freed up for the for other activities or for other tasks. Although the 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 flip side of this, even though writing and deleting is easier, okay, you have to look into each shell in the memory. Okay, meaning if you are searching back to our search algorithm, you have to search all elements or all memory slots to find which ones are available and which ones are where is the element that you are deleting, okay? So if we look at um, some runtime, okay? By now, you should have a basic understanding on these runtimes, okay? For arrays, reading is easy, okay? O of one, it's the most efficient algorithm that you can get, okay? Uh, because it's constant, okay? O of one is constant. Uh, so yeah, so madali lang makuha because you know the address of each item. Okay, but insertion is different because you have to move the entire array, okay, if uh, to the next available n plus one slot if you have to add an item, okay. Whereas on lists, inserts are easier because you can basically insert it anywhere uh, in the memory, but reading them would be uh, on the linear, on the uh, on the easier terms would be on linear time, okay, because you have to look on each shelf in the memory okay going back to all of n okay on our linear algorithms you have to look at each element of the array or the problem okay so i'm trying to connect it with the previous uh uh discussions that would be easier to refer to okay now let's say you have two lists okay you have an ordered an ordered list and you have an uh you have an unordered list, and you have a sorted list. Okay, I'll call it sorted instead. Okay, so now if we add by t in unordered, as easy as just adding it at the end of the list. Because unordered, the man, the order doesn't matter. Whereas when it comes to ordered, we have to insert it on the third element and move down the drink t um, activity. Okay, so again, when it comes to physical memory. Okay. If your drink T is located here and this one is occupied, okay, then we cannot easily move drink T here and insert by T. Okay, so there are times that we have to move the entire array, this new um, list of activities into the next available, um, in this case, four slot memory. Okay, so again, when it comes to arrays, reading is all of one. Uh, easier, okay, but insertion and deletion would be uh, much difficult, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, even difficult, no, but less efficient than the reading. While lists, on the other hand, it's easy on insertion and deletion, but uh, reading is at the um, disadvantage because you have to look again for all the memory slots, okay. So now you have. Um, Maybe just to compare, you have strings, okay? Uh, on Python, easy, quote unquote. This is a string. You have arrays, one, three, seven, nine, okay? And you may have an array or an array list or list which is composed of the same element, okay? But as we can, as we have seen earlier, okay, changing an array is not as efficient as possible, okay? Tendency is if you have to add an array, you're basically copying the entire array to the next available slots. Okay, let's say from three you want to change it to four elements. Okay, you have to move it to the next four slot uh, array. Okay, uh, whereas for list you can easily 
uh, put it anywhere available on the memory slot. So that is what we call uh, mutable or changeable, basically. So list, you can easily change the elements inside, okay? Because you can insert it anywhere in the memory. Um, whereas arrays, it's not mutable or not changeable, okay? So you might ask, how come it's not changeable when we can actually change the element of an array when you code, right? Uh, again, if you change the elements, you are you either insert it and move the entire move the rest of the elements left or right, depending if you're inserting or deleting. Or you copy the entire array and make a duplicate cop make another copy of that array with the new element inserted. So you are actually creating a duplicate copy of that array. So you cannot easily change um, the array itself. Okay. So to summarize, okay, we have arrays which are immutable or not changeable. It's very efficient when it comes to reading, okay, because we know the addresses but it's costly to shuffle and rearrange them, okay? So because the, uh, it could be much more efficient to just copy the array and move it to the next end slot rather than moving the elements uh, left or right, okay? So insert and delete require moving part of the array forward and backward. That's what I was saying of moving left and right. Whereas on lists, okay, they are mutable or changeable. They are easy to re rearrange, but uh, and also insert and delete are easier okay so um to end this class okay i want you to think about this um scenario okay suppose you're building an app for restaurants to take customer orders and your app needs to store a list of orders okay so servers keep adding orders to this list and chefs take order off the list and make them it's an order queue Servers add orders to the back of the queue, and chef takes the order off the queue and cooks it. Now, the question here is, which among the two is a more appropriate um, like a structure? Would it be an array or would it be a list? Okay, so again, um, for a list, you can easily insert it on the, on the memory slot, whereas in array, it's easier to uh, pick any random uh element okay so i want you to think about this and hopefully in next session uh you can share your thoughts about this scenario whether arrays or lists are more appropriate for this scenario okay are there any questions none to sir okay so if there are no questions we'll end the lecture here Okay, uh, stop sharing and stop the recording.